So this is The Art of Painting in Pastel uh, by Richmond and Little Johns. And let's talk about the condition. There's looks like someone put a coffee mug. It's like a baby coffee mug though, because it's only maybe a teacup. Uh, it looks pretty old though. It's not a recent uh, damage. The book has been in someone's library facing the sun. You can tell because you have a nice clean uh, fabric here. And then you have the, uh, the kind of faded yellow uh, spine. So um, there's also been delamination of the glue. It's, it's just old glue. You know, back then they used horse hooves. I know it's gross, but it's a true statement. And that's how they made glue back then is, you know, connective tissue of animals typically. Uh, let's go into the book and I'm going to keep it open uh, a little bit so we don't damage it, you know, further. Just keep it nice and clean. Looks like a lady by the name of Mary S.F. Thurstoff. I don't know if that's a name or not, but it's in, um, it definitely is in a fountain pen, not a ballpoint pen from 1930. That's the date that she put her name in it. And this is a really beautiful book. You know, it doesn't look like it was used much, although it is coming apart at the, at the, at the binding. You could probably put a new one on. There is some signs of age on the paper, uh, the kind of paper that was used. You know, it, it just it just sort of goes with the par with the chorus. Some of the paper was better quality where they print the, the actual lithographs. I think these are stone lithographs, but I'm not 100% sure. Each one has a piece of tissue to protect it. So there's a beautiful image for you. Um, this is... Uh, London is when they printed it in 1927. That's 92 years ago to this day. Sir Isaac Pittman and Sons, Parker Street, Kingsway, in Bath. Now, I've been in Bath, although I have a feeling it may have been printed in America because they also put down Melbourne, Toronto, and New York, but it may have been printed in America. You don't know. It's an American copy, so it could have been printed here. Uh, what's interesting is that it is, there is color, so you saw that the there was red text. Um, this is that old, I don't know if it's Linotronic or whatever the, it's not Linotronic, but I don't know if it's the, the Linotype machine, but you'll notice that the right side is actually even and the left side is even. And that would be a sign that they used, um, I, I believe it's a sign that they used, uh, you know, the type, the typography was set in real time where they made it out of uh, molten lead. Whereas they had little blocks that they would put in some printing. This kind of printing was probably done with a machine where they they created the, um, you know, the, uh, the, um, the negative and with lead in real time because you'll see that it's, it's laid out a certain way. But it definitely was an expensive book, I can tell. Even in the, when it was new, it was expensive. Um, there's a, uh, lots of illustrations. There's black and white in color and it talks about them. Colored illustrations, bricklayers by Frank uh, Brangwen. And you'll see a bunch of them. There's a whole long list of them. And they talk about the different methods used to make pastels. And there's a lot of conversation about the art. You can see in the, in the book itself. And then there's sections. And oh boy, these pictures are interesting. Let's be real careful with them. Um, I, like I said, I think these are stone lithographs. These days, lithography is done on limestone, I believe, but uh, the way they would do this, um, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, because this is full color and it's very smooth, very smooth. The way they would do this uh, is they would um, make different images on stone and each one would carry a specific color and each image would be slightly a uh, different part of the, of the coloring. And you can see this Ming vase with flowers in it. It has tulips. Um, it's signed by the artist and there's a conch shell and a, a what looks to be a necklace. Just beautiful pictures. Um, I'm gonna keep going. Here we've got just a wonderful picture of a guy, a portrait and a water jug and a water glass and apples. Someone's been eating them, which shows a sign of activity. So there's life in the in the in the lithograph. 
Okay, here's plate number three. And they're numbered, you know, you can see there's an index. We won't go through all of them because I want there to be a little bit of excitement and surprise. Uh, but you can see here, we've got toys playing with uh, each other, I guess. I didn't read the caption, but it's dolls. It says dolls, monkey, and gollywog. This picture was chosen as a novelty in still life. It is surprising that the toys are so seldom exploited. They can be made very amusing and are always nearly interesting in color. So there's a fun uh, plate right there. Let's see what the next one is. I'm having difficulty turning the page. There we go. This is plate number four. Books, bowls, and flowers. Books, bowls, and flowers. So as you go through the book, uh, there's wonderful, wonderful plates. These are all hand printed. You know, 92 years ago, they weren't doing this in a mass scale. Books were quite expensive to make even in 1927 at the point um, where, you know, machinery was quite common, but things like this were done by hand. They weren't done by mass production like we do today. Uh, you can't get stuff like this today. You know, today everything's, you can do it, you can make it by hand, but you can't get this, um, it's all, these days everything's uh, inkjet printed. Beautiful, beautiful uh, plates. Let's keep going. All right. And we have the lovely Hannah holding the camera. Here we go. And there's the next one, which is blue cornflowers. Cornflower blue. Look at that. I hear a lot about cornflower in, in uh, gemology, but I've never actually seen a cornflower until this very moment. Uh, this is the first time I've seen these plates. I'm actually doing this. This is a video of discovery. So this is hydrangeas, and, and we know this flower. It's a very popular flower even today. And you can see a plate with the flowers. And it's a beautiful plate. Okay, here's more of the same hydrangeas. This is a different plate. You can see someone really liked hydrangeas. Apparently the, the publisher, the editor, really loved them. So we have to be very careful because it's this book does not look to be well used. It's actually, even despite the condition of the spine, the book itself is in great condition on the inside. And this is an elm tree, just an abstract elm. You know, abstract elm. It's the mass of a tree, it says. Here's a cottages. You can see cottages here. Very simple and almost childlike in a two-color uh, plate here, just two colors. And the two colors would just be made on individual stone plates. They would be probably limestone. I've seen this lithography process, and it's generally done in limestone. Um, and it's quite complex. You might want to look on the video for how it's made. I think it's how it's made did a video on lithography, and you can find that on YouTube. It's a great video. Really interesting. The paper has changed. Now we have very high quality paper. It's very glossy and the black and white images are printed on this glossy, high quality paper. Not the same paper that was used for the uh, text, very different quality. And then we switch back to color and here's another color plate. This is uh, landscapes. Again, a very childlike drawing almost uh, uh, very, very um, crude in its in its presentation, but interesting nonetheless. And that's um, that's there. Now here's shadow cast on white wall. All right. Let's go to the next one. This is shadow cast on white wall. Interesting. A shadow of a tree. Boy. You know they found a lot of whimsy and simple things in uh, 1927, I guess. Shadow cast on white wall, a different version. What's different about this one? So this is different stages, apparently. They were showing the different stages of plates. The outline of the tree was strengthened with dark brown pastel, and so were the top of the wall and the door. 
uh, white or very light yellow ochre, okra, is it maybe okra, was used for the, for the uh, bright effect of the sunlight on the wall intermixed with the darker yellow, uh, darker yellow mentioned in the second stage. The shadows were deepened where they occurred. So you can see that they're actually making the image uh, in steps here, and that's one of the things they're doing is showing you the different steps. And here you go, elm trees again. Got elm trees. And again, a very simple uh, plate. And here we go, as we continue through, they show second stage of making the plate. You see the, the second stage, they show a different version of the same picture. Now trees and water is the next one. Trees and water, here you go. Okay, trees and water. Quite a lot of uh, love went into this uh, this book. A lot of a lot of writing, editing, uh, printing. It's very interesting. Now, what a lot of folks do, and it's very tragic, but it happens, is they don't keep the book. They end up um, taking the images out and and then putting them in frames. I think that's a bit sad because you know you're destroying history. Books were meant to be preserved. But, you know, if that's what you want to do, it's once you buy it, it's yours. A white canal bridge. You know, I can sort of see it. It's the sort of thing that you have in Photoshop now where they, they allow you to make these kind of um, treatments on photos to make them look this way. And here you actually have the image. It just looks that way because that's how it was made. This is Old Houses Folkstone. Wow, that is just beautiful. Look at that one. That's beautiful. Hannah, are you getting this in the right perspective so people can see it? Or how are you How are you showing it? Because I can't rotate. Yeah, let's take a look at this one. I really like this. Um, this really just inspires me. You know, art has a certain effect on people. And I can't say that all of the art in this book got me, but this one really got me. I just love how it has a sort of, um, you know, aged look to it. Even when it was new, it looked aged. And you've got the people and the beautiful buildings and just the way the colors, um, you know, just pop at you. Um, anyway, that's good. Let's go back to the other way we were holding the camera and let's keep going. Okay. This is study of straw and sunlight and shadow with farm buildings. This is, let's take a peek at it. Yeah, again, you know, beautiful, uh, beautiful colors. Look at how it how it just pops. I mean, the room looks enormous. You know, the room looks enormous. You see the hay. This is the study of straw and sunlight and shadow with farm buildings, okay? Um, this is plate 23. Let's keep going. A breezy day at Watchet, Somerset. And you can see the ocean waves crashing into the cliff. That's a very nice, it's a very nice thing. Okay. Let's see if there's another plate in here. Chalk cliffs on the south coast. The tissue's a bit folded over, it's dog-eared. I think it probably got that way by the owner. Um, you know, beautiful, beautiful plates. And we'll go through, there's just a few more, and I'll just go through all of them. You know, if any one of these images strikes you, you can buy the book. You know, I personally have a wonderful stone lithograph in my house that came from an old book that was given to me by a book collector, and, and a really a, a really serious book collector. And it's the image of, a, of a, two terrapins, or turtles, uh, swimming in the water, and it was it was made with stone lith lith uh, stone lithography, and it's a beautiful image I've had for twenty years. This is the quarry. Love those colors. Look how many colors there are. It's just wonderful. Okay, this is her lady 
ship, her ladyship. And it is a slightly colored, just a hint of the flesh tone, if you can see that. And the pearls have been made white uh, in her hair and around her neck. Um, and then just a little bit of, of pink. And she doesn't look, she looks to be an older woman, but you know, it's hard to tell from the stone lithograph. This is E-G-H is the, is the initials. I'm guessing that's a person. And it's a very uh, striking older man with uh, interesting, you know, the way that they put that together. And this is the Jovial Philosopher. So now we're doing portraits. Love this one. Look at the expression. You know, I mean, it's not realistic, but the expression is so dramatic in the way he looks and the colors. It's terrific. A Voldendam Fisherman. Let's see what that's all about. I'm curious. Oh boy, there's a crusty old guy. He's a crusty, salty fisherman smoking his cigar, keeping his head warm. And you can just see the age on his face. It's uh, very remarkable. This is a man of 80. So this is the guy, the artist, artist opinion of what a man at 80 looked like. And here is a professor, a scholar. Love the colors. I like how the head is like floating on a mountain, really. That's, that's interesting. This is called Absent. That's the next one. Absent. So I'm guessing absent means that she's looking at her beloved husband or, or lover and she's waiting longingly for him. You know, these days this would be very politically incorrect because women don't do this sort of thing. Or maybe they do. I don't know. But at the time, you know, if someone was off to war or they were away from home for long periods of time, you had a portrait of them. And I think they're called daguerreotypes, ambrotypes, tintypes. They had different kinds, but uh, depending on the material that the picture was made on or just photographs. Um, but this looks like, you know, from the style here, it's probably, she was probably modern to the day. You know, she was probably a 1920s lady. And here's Matilda. And the contrast in manner and intention is what the caption says. Matilda. Any one of these, if you had the original painting, would be, you know, I'm sure would be proudly displayed in a museum, an art museum, because they're just wonderful, wonderful artwork. Really, really beautiful stuff. This is the green shawl. Look at the colors. Wow, and this looks like an original, even though it is a lithograph. I mean, it looks, the color is just so vivid in this. Um, really wonderful. The Dutch baby. Let's see what that looks like. Here's the Dutch baby. The Dutch baby. It's a very cute one. Now that is, I believe this is 38 is the number. We're up to 38. The, the Vermeon God is the next one. And you have a, uh, it's a nude or topless, and I don't really quite know what that's about. It says, the last paragraph of the note to plate 38 applies with even greater force to this, the last example. Here the aim is solely decorative, that is to produce a composition of form and color as a complete end in itself. So that's the last one according to the to the book. And then there's a discussion about the preservation of pastels, a discussion about materials. So, you know, when you become the new owner of this fine antiquarian piece, um, I wouldn't rebind it, but some people like to put new bindings on their books. I would leave it as is and just take good care of it. But you're going to get a magnificent... Uh, collection of art and it is absolutely wonderful and at any price uh, something that you will cherish and enjoy in your home or office.